I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir at Sheridan. So hi Tahir and thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me as always. And uh, it's uh, today we're going to finish uh, our, our series of segments on artists and brands. And what I want to talk about is uh, talk about deeper involvement between uh, brands and uh, the music scene on, on a wider level. So uh, there's been lots of talk about uh, projects like the one carried out by uh, uh, Red Bull and uh, Converse uh, on the music scene uh, on, on a you know, multi-year uh, broader scale. And, and they seem to be really successful in getting audiences involved and achieving achieving some results in terms of exposure. So do you think that these examples are going to st start setting a bar for other companies to become more involved into the in independent music scene as well? I think so. I think so. I mean, uh, one of the earlier series we were talking about uh, that demographic of 16 to 25 being really hard to, to crack and actually music being a really good way of doing that. And so brands have realized that a deeper involvement uh, in artists which is not just about the bigger artists, yeah. gives them an association with music generally and a type of music. So Red Bull Records, you know, as you mentioned, is a really good example. Converse is a good example. Other fashion brands are good examples. You know, there are brands now that are coming out looking at ways of uh, supporting music from the creation level. Um, so, you know, I think I mentioned earlier on when we were talking offline about, you know, a hardware manufacturer who, you know, set up a music club as part of their campaign uh, where they funded all the creation of the music in exchange for getting an exclusive that uh, they could offer to their uh, customers to listen to the music on their high-end speakers. Yeah. So it's about, um, you know, not only being involved in saying this music is associated with us, but saying this brand was part of the curation of this music and the creation yeah. of the music. Yeah. And do you think like uh, brands are starting to uh, cotton on to the fact that these type of involvements are multi-year involvements? You know, a lot of brands uh, on the corporate level uh, were still looking at, you know, campaign to campaign, season to season if it's a fashion brand. But here we're talking about, you know, high stake multi-year approaches. Are brands, you know, starting to understand that that's the best thing to do when it comes to music? It depends on their, partly depends on the structure of the, of the brand. Content, you, know, yeah. you know, you look at Red Bull, it's very autonomous. They do whatever they want to do. <laughs> whether they want to set up a, yeah. Yeah, whether they want to set up a football team or sponsor a motor racing team, you know, it's a different way of working. So with the bigger corporates, multi-year type projects need to have buy-in of, you know, buy of the business. Having said that, you know, if you can have a multi-year type of arrangement in place, where you've scoped out where you think you're going. Yeah. Absolutely. Brands, brands look at that for sure. Yeah, because of course, like a lot of brands will have deliverables that they want to achieve with a, in a specific set of time. And if you're doing a campaign like this, it may be like one or two or three years before your brand becomes well known enough within that space to actually deliver a return yeah. on the image. So that, that's kind of the, the trick question is where brands are willing to spend that money in advance in order to get a return, like maybe in two years time. Yeah, I mean, I think that depends on is, is when the brand knows their own journey, right. then they can associate that with the music journey. So when the brand knows, look, you know, we're at this scale, we're looking to scale in this territory, we're looking to create this line of products, they know that they can move with a band in, or with, with a roster of artists in, the, in that way. Yeah. So really, it's, brand, it's always brand led. The brand needs to understand what they're going to be doing in year two, three, four, and then they can build a campaign at, at that level. Yeah. So it's definitely something that uh, I think the more progressive and also growing brands look at, um, yeah. and those that are more associated with the demographic of the music that they're looking to get associated with. And looking at it from the other side of the spectrum, from the artist's perspective, is the fact that these brands like Red Bull and Converse uh, uh, becoming in a way uh, legitimate as uh, promoters and, and uh, supporters of music, also helping bands come to terms with the fact that they are going to have to accept uh, uh, working with these brands uh, in, in the long term if they want to support their career and perhaps help other brands get into this, this field as well. Uh, d definitely. I think you know, ultimately the music industry is changed, changing all the time and uh, the money comes from different sources now. It's not just about being associated with a major label, it's now yeah. being associated with an independent and if that independent's backed by a, a brand then uh, artists are looking at it. I mean Red Bull Records have done fantastically. Um, and it's also the ethos of the brand. So yeah. if, if the artist thinks, you know, I, I want to be associated with Converse, I want to be associated with Adidas or, or whatever, um, then th they'll buy into that even, even more. 
I mean, ultimately, you've got to find sources of funding, sources of support. And so if that's via a brand and you feel that the, that doesn't dilute your music then uh, and your, your own pers- your band's brand, then why not? That's great. Well, thank you so much. And I really hope you enjoyed the series on uh, artists and brands. Uh, thanks to hear. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.